August is already upon us, and fortunately, we have a new batch of LGBT-led projects to hold us over until September. These movies and television shows are available across various streaming services and are also in theaters. Well, at least some of them. And if you're into horror and fantasy, you're definitely in for a treat. In the comment section, let me know which projects you will watch, which projects you learned about for the first time, and if you have watched any of these projects, if you enjoyed them or not. And a big thank you to all of the new members who join my channel. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. Now, stay tuned. They Slash Them is a psychological slasher following a group of LGBT teens targeted by a serial killer at a lakeside conversion camp. Kevin Bacon, who plays Owen Whistler, the head of the camp, has the magnetism of an unassuming salesman who turns out to be a cult leader. This allows for the campers to be manipulated and psychologically abused by the staffers. We learn that the camp has a long lineage with the purpose to help teens see the benefit of living a heteronormative lifestyle, to become more normal, and to help them find a new sense of freedom. Post Pose, it is incredible to see a film feature two trans leads, Theo Germain and Quay Tan, and a predominant LGBT cast. The actors play gender identities and sexualities that reflect their actual identities and sexualities. In real life, They Slash Them rewrites horror and shows real horror is what people are capable of when they refuse to see outside their own ideology. We can also say that the killer's mask is a theoretical mask that people in the LGBT community have to wear to protect ourselves from a heteronormative society. The director of the film, John Logan, identifies as gay. They Slash Them premieres on Peacock on August 5th. Peacock has a free tier, by the way. You don't have to pay to see the film. LGBT horror is having a moment right now. Hypochondriac is a gay horror mystery following Will, a Hispanic gay potter whose life devolves into chaos as he loses function of his body while being haunted by the physical manifestation of his childhood trauma. He is desperate to keep this trauma hidden. However, when a family member reappears, the past lurks into his present life with his loving boyfriend. He exhibits unexplainable symptoms and spirals into an obsession determined to solve this mystery. Hypochondria takes on mental illness and creates fully realized characters. It is a brilliant character study as well as a moving portrayal of the real life horrors of trauma. At times, the film shifts to fantasy, but this approach works with mental illness. The acting is powerful, as are the emotions. The actor who plays Will, Zach Vila, might look familiar because he co-starred in American Horror Story 1984. Hypochondriac is based on the real-life mental health breakdown of the writer and director who identifies as gay. The film was a nominee for the Jewelry Prize at this year's Frameline Film Festival in San Francisco. I think the goal of the film is to remind us that people who live with untreated trauma and mental health issues are all around us and we should have compassion for them. Hypochondriac started screening in theaters on July 29th and will be available for purchase on Vudu on August 4th. It is also screening at Alamo Draft House Theaters in Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, Denver, Austin, El Paso, and Houston. Gay nerds rejoice. House of Dragons is here and maybe queer. House of Dragons is a 10 episode fantasy drama created by George R.R. R. Martin for HBO. It is a prequel to the Game of Thrones, which aired from 2011 to 2019. Set 200 years before the Game of Thrones, the series chronicles the beginning of the end for the House of Targaryen, as well as the events leading up to and covering the War of Succession. The show is based on Martin's 2018 book, Fire and Ice. The book is categorized as an LGBT book because it features a number of gay and bisexual characters. I'm not sure if the show will highlight their sexualities, but Lenore, Joffrey, and Carl are lovers. There are rumors about Princess Rhaenyra having threesomes with two characters, although it mostly sounds like rumors only. 
Also, non-binary actor Emma Darcy plays Princess Targaryen. House of Dragons is scheduled to premiere on August 21st on HBO Mask. In New Zealand, the series will be distributed by Sky's Soho TV channel and Neon streaming services. In India, Disney Plus Hotstar and Sky Atlantic in the UK, Ireland, Italy, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. The creators of Queer Eye are taking notes from RuPaul's Playbook and turning out international productions. Queer Eye Germany was released in March on Netflix. Now Brazil is the next country to be Queer Eyed with a new set of Fab Fivers to provide uplifting and transformative makeovers. The new team includes Fred, who handles well-being, Guto, who handles design, Rika, who handles style, Luca, who handles culture, and Johan, who handles beauty. As they offer advice to everyday heroes, showing them how to embrace themselves, viewers are sure to feel inspired to make small changes in their personal lives. Fred is my favorite thus far. Outside of Queer Eye, he's a medical doctor, I think specializing in dermatology. I am sure Netflix will release another Queer Eye show in about three months. In the comment section, let me know if you will watch Queer Eye Brazil. Queer Eye Brazil premieres August 24th on Netflix. A League of Their Own is a comedy series about the All-American Women's Baseball League and is adapted from the 1992 film of the same name, but with different characters and storylines. The series starts with the formation of the League in 1943 during World War II and follows the players as they fight to keep it alive through changing times, sexual awakenings, injuries, and racism. The series deviates from the movie that it intentionally examines racism head on in the League. Because of this, the show features several black actors. Marquise Wilson from B-Boy Blues has a small role on the show as well. The Real Women's Baseball League was racially segregated and only allowed white players, even after Jackie Robinson desegregated Major League Baseball in 1947. The series was co-created by Abby Jacobson, who also stars in it. Jacobson is currently in a relationship with actress Jodie Balfour. Rosie O'Donnell, who played in the movie, will guest star in one episode as a bartender at a lesbian bar. In the comment section, let me know if you will watch A League of Their Own. A League of Their Own premieres August 12th on Amazon Prime Video. Private Desert is a drama out of Brazil that follows Daniel, an off-duty police officer, under internal investigation regarding inappropriate behavior. After being suspended, his life spirals down a hopeless path. His only escape is virtually dating a mysterious person. After the distance between them becomes unendurable, he wanders the country in search of his internet love, the only real tangible thing in his life. In his search, he finds that life is made of many shapes and colors. The film is about discovering who you are. No matter race, sexuality, or identity, we are here to find ourselves within ourselves. We don't know what we are really until we face our reality. And love is a feeling and not a body. This is an absolute must for someone wanting to see a deeply moving romance. The cinematography is beautiful, as well as the performances by the two leads. I think most people will say the film comes alive during the second half, but every moment is gorgeous. The film was Brazil's official selection in the Best International Film category at the 2022 Academy Awards. The film received eight nominations at the Cinema Brazil Grand Prize, and it won Best Film at the Venice Film Festival. The Portuguese title is Deserto Particular. The film will be released in select theaters on August 26th. In the comment section, let me know if you will be watching private desert. Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is a horror comedy mystery leaning towards millennial satire. Amanda Lestenberg, who plays Sophie, is the protagonist. She invites her new girlfriend to a hurricane party in a secluded area thrown by seven of her lifelong friends who are in their 20s and from extremely wealthy families. Maria Bakalova, a rat star from that famous Rudy Giuliani scene, plays Amanda's girlfriend. 
The friends play a party game called Bodies, 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 where the killer is anonymously selected and has to kill one person in the dark. When someone is actually killed, the friends fight to discover who is the killer. I saw an advanced screening at Comic-Con with the director and the cast. I will upload a separate review if you're interested. But I love that the main character is black, gay, and flawed. Sophie, having been in rehab, has not spoken to her friends for some time, and it creates tension at the start of the film. Bodies, Bodies, Bodies will be released nationwide in theaters on August 5th. And this is the third horror film that I featured in this video. In the comment section, let me know if you're a fan of horror and if you'll be watching Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Season 1 of Rebel Day premiered on Netflix in January of this year, so I'm shocked that Season 2 premiered July 27th. The premiere date was close enough to August 1st, which is why I'm including it in this video. Season 1 followed a group of high school students on scholarship at Elite Way School, honing their skills as musicians. The series explored a cutthroat music competition and the enemies that the students created along the way. There were some intriguing cliffhangers at the end of Season 1. In Season 2, we get a gay storyline with Luca, a rich snobby brat from Argentina, and Oscar, the new guy. Hopefully we see more male gay characters on the show, but the show is saturated in gay sauce. Rebel Day is like Elite meets High School Musical meets Riverdale. The series was adapted from the TV series of the same name. In the comment section, let me know if you're a fan of Rebel Day or if you watch the original show. Speaking of Riverdale, Riverdale was the first teen drama that I binge watched at the start of the pandemic in 2020. I went down the rabbit hole and started watching every teen drama across the world. Riverdale is a TV series on the CW based on the characters from the Archie comics. Season 1 premiered in 2017. In Season 1, the script was believable and the performances remarkable. Season 2 went in a very strange direction and so has every season after. Season 6 premiered last November and the finale aired on July 31st. In Season 6, there was a Sabrina the Teenage Witch crossover and a witch storyline. I stopped watching the show during Season 5. I don't plan on watching Season 6. What I loved about the show is that one of the main characters was an out and proud gay man and suddenly all the girls on the show were gay. The writing room at Batwoman or Nancy Drew should take over the writing room at Riverdale. The show has been on life support since Season 2. On August 7th at 3 a.m., you can stream Season 6 on Netflix. In the comment section, let me know if you're a fan of Riverdale. Todo Por Lucy is a reimagined Spanish language update on the TV classic I Love Lucy. Season 1 premiered May 20th on Prime Video and Season 2 premieres on August 19th. In Season 1, we find Lucy and Ricky unmarried and living in separate households in a modern relationship. Lucy has her own career and values her independence, but Ricky wants Lucy to move in with him. The storylines, however, stay in the spirit of the original show. But instead of Ethel and Fred, their neighbors are Federico and his husband, Esteban. Federico owns the building, is Ricky's uncle, and has an ex-wife. Andres Zuno, who plays Esteban, is known for being the first Mexican actor to star in an American soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. In the telenovela, Papa e Toda Madre, he played the first gay character to be legally married in Mexican television. Because of the gay storyline on that show, an ultra-conservative group called for the show to be taken off of the air because it normalized homosexuality. Also, my favorite new actress, Paulette Hernandez, appears in one episode of the show, Total Poor Lucy. I swear if she sniffs out a gay storyline, she dives purse first into the project. Every other project that she has appeared in also has a gay storyline. The series is produced by Viacom CBS Global exclusively on Amazon Prime Video in Latin America and the States. Season 2 of Total Poor Lucy premieres August 19th on Amazon Prime. In the comment section, let me know if you will be watching. A 
of an age is a drama following a young Serbian ballroom dancer who experiences an unexpected and intense romance with a friend's older brother. It's the summer of 1999 in Melbourne and the main character is prepping for the Australian dance finals when he receives a call from his dance partner Ebony who has awoken on a beach in an unfamiliar town after a night out. With the help of Ebony's older brother Adam they attempt to make it to the finals on time but the pair discover they have more in common than expected. Of an Age was filmed in Australia. It premieres August 4th, opening night of the Melbourne International Film Festival. This is the director's second feature film. His first You Won't Be Alone premiered to critical acclaim at the Sundance Film Festival. The films at the Melbourne International Film Festival are available to stream on their website via Myth Play. If you're outside of Australia, you have to use a VPN to watch them. VPNs really come in handy when you want to watch international cinema. Macy is a documentary film following Britain's oldest panto dame at 85 years young. Macy has been performing in drag for over 50 years. In the documentary, we see the challenges of being an older performer, as well as Maisie meeting her drag peer from the States, who is the Guinness World Record holder for being the oldest drag queen in the States. The documentary is a loving tribute to David Raven, the man behind the makeup, who is a cabaret legend and live performer. The film won Best Documentary at the Dublin Film Critics Circle Awards and the Audience Award at the Cine City Film Festival. Maisie premieres in theaters and is a available to stream via BFI Player and Bohemia Euphoria on August 5th. In the comment section, let me know if you will be watching Maisie. Mike is not an LGBT film, nor does it have a gay storyline. However, I wanted to highlight it because one of the older Mikes is played by a non-binary black actor, BJ Minor. It is rare to see a black non-binary actor play a lead role in an industry-backed production. Also, the older Mike is played by Trevante Rhodes from Moonlight, one of my all-time favorite films. In the comment section, let me know if you will watch Mike. Mike premieres on Hulu on August 25th. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please follow me on Instagram at writervickyates for more about my art and literary projects. And in the comment section, let me know which movies and TV shows you plan to watch, which projects you learned about for the first time, and if you watched any of these shows, if you enjoyed them or not. And since there's an uptick in LGBT horror films, let me know if you are a fan of the genre. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel and become a member if you can. Like and share the video. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, have a lovely day. Besos. Mwah.